Welcome, Betsabe. How are you? Um, and thanks for coming for the panel. I was wondering if you could tell me what you do at ICON. Absolutely. Hi. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, at ICON, I'm one of the co-founders. Okay. And I, as an entrepreneur co-founder, I wear many, many hats. So from operations to finance, dealing with investors. But then I, let me share with you what we do at ICON. Yes. At ICON, we are building an identity that connects all the public chains together. And our vision is to have a single identity that carries across private and public blockchains, wow. building an environment where both private and public blockchains can co coexist. Wow, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. We actually did a panel, um, oh, sorry, a, a presentation on how to connect all the blockchains um, uh, for San Francisco Blockchain Week. So that's interesting. Yeah, that's a very important topic to yes, discuss. Yeah. No one has the solution. We are trying. We're fig exactly. figuring out uh, yeah. how we can collaborate. Yeah. And tell me, what have you seen are the challenges and the positives about being a woman in the blockchain space? Well, I think that, let me start with the positives. Okay. I think that one of the positives is that as a woman, we have the opportunity to have a voice, I mean, to represent the consumers. I mean, ultimately, blockchain is trying to solve the problem of trust. And the trust is not only about solving the problem of trust for male, it's also for solving the problem of trust for females. Yes. How as a consumers can we eventually honor data or have a say in how the data is, or data is used? So we have a seat on the table by being a woman on the blockchain. We are able to make our voice heard and be able to help early on to make history. That's the way that I see it. I'm being part of making history of a technology that is here to stay very challenging still for the adoption, but it's here to stay definitely. Mm -hmm. So how can we bring our female perspective and our very critical thinking, as most women, we are known for that, um, to really build this, take this, this technology mainstream? And uh, do you think there's a particular challenges for women um, as regards the space? Absolutely. <laughs> well, I come from uh, finance and fintech, and I have seen quite a lot of challenges in that industry. Okay. Blockchain, I think that the challenges are even uh, higher. Okay. Yeah, and um, don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many. But if I had to pinpoint two, okay. uh, the, the technology is, is difficult to understand. Yes. So um, if you're a female that need to do a transition from another career, you really need to focus on the tech. The tech stack, understanding yes. that tech stack is yes. very important. Mm -hmm. That would be one. Um, the other one is there is still a lot of noise around blockchain, as we have heard in many different startups, problems like in Uber mm -hmm. um, with the culture. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are some teams that the culture is very mature. Mm -hmm. It's a new technology. It's been a lot of experiments and testing. Um, but also there has been a lot of money made very quickly. So that creates high egos, and you combine the experiment with the high egos. Sometimes female are put in a position that are quite uncomfortable. Yeah. I think um, I did a, a project uh, 10 years ago about why women are funded less than men for a year. And um, I think that was one of the big things that came out that often women don't promote themselves as yeah. much um, and therefore get sidelined or, 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 or feel um, a bit left out. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I think that is not a, like the female that are in, in blockchain right now. They are overly promoting themselves. Okay. They need yeah, to so actually. That's not an issue. They, they, that's they right. need to get the tech stack right. They need yeah. to understand the technology right. right. Once you are an expert in technology, then you can move into promotion. But I think that is that combination of learning the technology, but then there's still some biases in the industry, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the biggest hurdle. And, and what do you see um, is coming in 2020 for the blockchain crypto space? Like, what's your personal vision of what you think is going to happen? Well, I think that um, in 2019, we have seen a correction and a lot of startups that I saw before, mm -hmm. um, they're no longer alive, yeah. sadly. And even going to conferences, we used to see in conferences full of people, investors, and now it's like very quiet. Yes. I think that in 2020, we will continue to see a consolidation. Only the very good projects can arise primarily in infrastructure. 
With regards to revenue um, generation, we continue to see custodians, wallets, and exchanges making some sort of money. Okay. But you, even exchanges going back to the basics, financial base, fundamentals, yeah. to continue to make money and weather the storm. Right. So I think that we will see great um, startups rising in those areas, like sec cybersecurity, um, again, exchanges, um, custodians, <clears throat> sorry. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be less and less startups focused on blockchain. But then what I anticipate is going to be a lot of infrastructure build 2020, 21, 22. That's when we're going to see real adoption. There are, there are good projects out there. Yeah. And there are enterprises yeah. and consumers that are becoming more aware and really asking for those solutions. And I really think they're going to happen. Great. Great. That's a really positive slant. Thank you so much. And I think this panel is going to be great tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. And I know many of them. They're good friends of mine. So I'm excited to have some interesting conversations. And and a great way to finish 2019, right? Yes, <laughs> can't wait for that. <laughs> glad. Yeah. I'm okay. Glad well, thanks for coming again. Thank okay. You.